Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Shanzhou Luofu Lieutenant and Professional Sword Surfer Yanqing is our 5-star standard banner ice hunt character who's incredible at outputting high single target damage thanks to his insane self-buffing mechanics. He's very simple to play and feels very powerful, especially at the early game, and understanding the different aspects of his kit will go a long way to helping him achieve his peak swordsman performance. This guide will go through Yanqing's kit, abilities, idolans, best relic and light cone builds, and team synergies to help you better understand how to maximize Yanqing's potential. Let's get into it. Yanqing, Lieutenant of the Lawfu Cloud Knights reporting in. We'll go through his traces and abilities first to see the different ways he can buff himself and dish out a lot of damage. To start, Yanqing's skill is a single target attack that hits multiple times. It has higher damage multipliers and can break more toughness compared to the basic attack, but more importantly, casting his skill activates the Soul Steel Sync state for one turn, which is the most important aspect of his kit. This is in his talent ability, which is a huge block of text, so let's just summarize it quickly. It reduces the chances of being attacked, it gives crit rate, it gives crit damage, it gives Yanqing's attacks a fixed chance to do a follow-up attack, and the follow-up attack also has a 65% base chance to freeze the enemy and deal additional ice damage for one turn. That's a lot of effects, and you can see just how much it makes him stronger. It's huge stat boosts, more damage sources, and a nicely added crowd control utility. However, the catch is that if Yanqing is damaged, the state disappears. This makes his next attack unbuffed and lose out on potential damage until it's reactivated. You can easily check if it's on by the glowing icon in his character HUD. If Yanqing gets hit but has a shield that prevents damage, it still won't remove the sync buff. This can be a major factor in his team's consideration since you either want to shield him or prevent him from being targeted in the first place. As a hunt character, he already has an innately low taunt value, and part of his talent's effect is also reducing aggro on him, so he has his own means of avoiding attention. However, However, the right teammates can further help with this, which I'll discuss later in the team section. Additionally, if you're casting Yanqing's skill to activate the buff, the sync state will not be activated at the start, but rather at the end of his skill's animation. So if it hasn't been activated yet, or it's been deactivated by getting damaged, the skill attack itself won't receive the benefits of the sync's buff. For the most part, Yanqing wants to use his skill rather than just basic attacks during his turn for more damage and to maintain the sync buff, so he ends up being a consistent skill point consumer in the team. Having good skill point generation and management from your team goes a long way for Yan Qing. As for the follow-up attack, it can be triggered by his basic attack, skill, or ultimate. It also regenerates energy, which makes it valuable to help recover his high energy cost. And it depletes the toughness bar of ice weak enemies to improve Yan Qing's breaking capabilities. Moving on, having the sync state activated is also really important when using his ultimate. Yan Qing's ult gives a whopping 60% crit rate increase when cast, and if he has the sync state on, Yanqing gets a further crit damage buff, which both last for one turn. Combined with the sync state, that's a lot of crit stats. He serves his sword in this sick ultimate animation and deals huge single target ice damage to an enemy. With all the buffs Yanqing has, this can result in impressive nuke damage numbers. So just remember that it's best to use his ultimate when the sync buff is on. If he's damaged, it's generally better to first reactivate his sync state before using his ultimate. Don't forget as well that the ultimate's crit damage buff can also be taken advantage advantage of by his skill attack. So for example, if it's Yanqing's turn and the sync state is still active, you can first cast his ultimate which will then give him the additional crit damage buff, then use his skill afterwards to take advantage of the added buffs and also to not waste the energy it generates. For his technique, he can buff himself before the battle to get a 30% damage bonus against enemies that have 50% HP or higher for 2 turns. You definitely want to activate it against elites or bosses. Let's also take a look and see what his ascension bonus ability offer. The Ascension 2 ability makes him deal additional damage against targets with ice weaknesses, which simply means more damage output in such scenarios. The Ascension 4 ability gives the Sync State a 20% effect resistance buff as well. This is also quite welcome to help him resist pesky crowd control or damage over time debuffs that can affect his Sync uptime and to overall help his survivability. And his Ascension 6 ability gives a 10% speed increase for 2 turns when triggering a crit hit. Since Yanqing can crit frequently Anyway, this can pretty much feel like a permanent speed boost when it gets activated, which Yanqing will really appreciate. 
for his traces leveling priority, his talent, skill, and ultimate are all really vital components for his damage, so you'll want to end up leveling them equally as he progresses. You can leave his basic attacks alone though. For the ascension abilities, unlock the A2 ability as soon as it's available and you have the materials. The A4 ability can be more optional and I would sooner recommend the A6 ability first because the speed boost is more valuable than the effect resistance buff, but he deserves all of them unlocked anyway. The minor traces give attack, ice damage bonus, and HP as well. Unlock them when you have a surplus of materials to spare. Yanjing's amazing at E0 already, though his idolons generally provide ways to further boost his damage. Let's go through them quickly. E1 makes Yanqing deal additional ice damage against a frozen enemy. This synergizes with his own innate chance to freeze the enemy, but having a teammate that can also freeze helps too. E2 now adds a 10% energy regenerate buff to his sync state. This is a very welcome addition that helps with Yanqing's energy regeneration, leading to faster ultimate recovery and ultimately higher damage potential. E3 increases his skill and basic attack levels. E4 gives Yanqing a 12% ice resistance penetration bonus if his HP stays at 80% or higher. Since Yanqing wants to avoid getting damaged or at least have consistent high health, this should be constantly active. Resistance penetration is also a rare and effective way of increasing damage, making this a pretty good damage-boosting Eidolon. E5 increases his talent and ultimate levels. And finally, E6 simply lets him keep his ultimate's buffs for one turn more if he manages to defeat an enemy while they're active. In theory, he can keep chaining this to maintain it as long as there are enemies to defeat. This is a way to just keep his stat boosts on longer, resulting in more damage potential. Now for Yan Qing's relics. We'll go through his stat preferences, then the sets. For the body piece, go for crit damage. Yan Qing already gets a lot of innate crit rate buffs, and possibly from his light cone too, so stacking crit damage will be more beneficial. For the feet piece, speed and attack are your main options. Speed makes Yan Qing's turn rate faster and can be more beneficial in longer, drawn out battles. Hitting 120 speed is also a requirement for Yan Qing's recommended planar set, and using speed boots is the easiest way of achieving that. Generally speaking, speed speed is more preferable. Still, attack stats makes Yanqing hit harder, and the substat quality between your options can also skew your choice. For the planar sphere, ice damage bonus is the obvious pick, but if you don't have a decent piece yet, a good attack piece can temporarily work. Then when it comes to the link rope, attack and energy regenerate are the main options. Attack obviously just makes him hit harder, but the main benefit of ER is that it helps him spam his ultimate more, so even with lower attack, the damage loss might be offset by more frequent ults. Consider as well that ER is a very rare stat, and you can get attack substats in an ER rope, but not the other way around. However, if you have Ting Yun who can already battery for him, or other energy-related buffs or sources, that can also make having more ER unnecessary. At the end of the day, it might largely be a case of it depends, and the substat quality can also be a factor as well. Having both options available eventually won't hurt of course, and can let you tune him to your preference. As for the substats, aim for crit damage, speed, and attack rolls. Crit rate can also still have value as long as it doesn't overcap, but due to his innate crit rate buffs, this is much less necessary. More so if you have light cones that already give a lot of crit rate. Also, effect hit rate should not be a priority, but it's not entirely useless since that can still help with his freeze chance. Remember as well to prioritize stats over sets first. Now on to the relic sets. First of all, I want to stress how the substat quality of your set pieces can be a large deciding factor. This is because we have three top relic combos for Yan Qing. One is the four-piece Hunter of Glacial Forest. The two-piece effect gives 10% ice damage bonus, and the four-piece effect gives extra crit damage when the wearer uses their ultimate. Another set combo is using the two-piece Hunter of Glacial Forest plus a two-piece Musketeer set, which gives 12% attack. This two-piece combo is an unconditional stat buff that can gain an upper hand if Yanqing doesn't get good uptime on the four-piece hunter's conditional effect, so ideally Yanqing should have good uptime on it. Between these two, you are choosing between either more crit damage or more attack. And at the end of the day, you want to have a good balance of these stats. Remember as well that these attack and crit are rollable substats. It's very possible that the two-piece set combo has a lot of crit damage rolls even compared to the four-piece hunter, in which case the higher stat value will make it pull ahead. It's also generally known that farming for good two-piece sets is easier than farming for an equally good four-piece set. A third relic set option is also the four-piece musketeer set, and its main difference is the four-piece effect speed bonus. The basic attack damage bonus is underutilized since Yanqing doesn't rely as much on basic attacks anyway. If you manage to get a set with really good substats, it can still end up being competitive with the previous options. 
For his planar ornaments, the top recommendation is the Space Ceiling Station. It gives 12% attack by default and 12% more when the user has 120 speed, which Yanqing will likely have anyway. It's a straightforward and easy to utilize offensive set. An alternative set can be the Inert Cell Soto, which gives a small crit rate boost, but when the user has 50% or higher crit rate, their ultimate and follow up damage increases. Yanqing's buffs will help trigger this, but it won't be as consistent as the Space Station set's effect. It also does not affect his skill damage as well. Let's move on to Yanqing's light cones and he thankfully has really good options even for free to play players. In the Night is Zila's signature light cone but it's also top tier for Yanqing. It's got high base stats, gives crit rate and also has an effect that buffs the wearer based on their speed stat. So Yanqing will appreciate speed a lot more on his relics if this is equipped. After that is Yanqing's signature light cone, Sleep Like the Dead. It also has high base stats, increases crit damage, and buffs the user's crit rate for one turn if their basic attack or skill does not crit. So this effect has a cooldown of three turns. Cruising in the Stellar Sea is another five star option that's purchasable in Herta's store by playing through simulated universe. It gives crit rate and more against enemies with 50% or lower HP. If the user defeats an enemy, they get an attack buff for two turns. The consistency of this relies on Yanqing dealing the killing blow and also if there are enemy mobs that Yanqing can pick off. But all in all, it's free, very solid, and you can superimpose it in the long run. Yanqing's 4-star alternatives are actually pretty good too. Swordplay is a top 4-star option that gives a stacking damage bonus when you hit one enemy repeatedly. This has very strong potential for single target focus fire damage, and Yanqing's multiple hits of his different attack types can proc a stack per hit. So you can get the damage bonus effect really quickly. Another solid pick is the River Flows in Spring. It gives a speed and damage bonus buff that disappears when the user gets damaged. In that case, it will only be regained after Yanqing's next turn. While this complements his playstyle, its entire effect hinges on maintaining the condition. If you don't have the shielding for it, especially against bosses with AoE attacks, the buff uptime might significantly suffer. In that case, other weapons with more consistent effects will be better. What's nice though is you can get this for free anyway in the Operation Briefing Progress. It's also a random reward in Echo of War Battles and purchasable in the Forgotten Hall shop so you can superimpose it eventually. Only Silence Remains gives an unconditional attack buff and crit rate if there are only two enemies or fewer in battle, so it's ideally used in boss fights where the crit rate buff can be consistently maintained. If against enemy mobs, its full potential is only unlocked when you've sufficiently reduced the enemy count. While those are what I generally choose from, here are two more but less recommended options. Subscribe for more gives a damage increase to the user's basic attack and skill, which doubles if the user's energy is at maximum. It's a good damage bump for Yanqing's skill, but since his ultimate should be used as often as optimally possible, the double bonus uptime won't be as consistent. Note as well that the effect won't buff follow-up attacks. And lastly, the Return to Darkness light cone is the Battle Pass light cone, so it's not as accessible and shouldn't be made a priority for Yanqing. But it is an interesting light cone which increases crit rate and also has a chance to remove a buff on the target enemy by scoring a crit hit, which is easy for Yanqing anyway. Its utility can be situational, and ultimately, it still relies on RNG. At the very least, it's still a good stat stick with some interesting potential. Since River Flows in Spring and Cruising in the Cellar Sea are both amazing accessible options already, they can be your go-to options, so you won't have to rely on gacha luck anymore. Finally, our last section is Yanqing's team comp and possible synergies. To recap, a major consideration is that Yanqing needs a team that's geared to protect him from damage or keep the heat away from him. Shielding and aggro manipulation are valuable utilities to look for, which preservation units provide. Your free options are Fire MC and March, who can both shield your teammates and taunt enemies. Fire MC does a great job of maintaining enemy aggro and, for the most part, can protect your Yanqing well. Just be mindful that by themselves, their team shields are quite quite thin, so strong enough AoE attacks from enemies can still break through and damage Yanqing. March is also a good option thanks to her strong but single target shield, which can also increase the aggro of allies above 30% HP. However, it is a strange case where if you shield Yanqing, you will increase his aggro too. He does counteract that with his own aggro reduction buff and being a hunt character, but shielding him with March is still a risk consideration. So one strategy is to also keep shielding March herself or someone else to more likely aggro away enemies from Yanqing. Her ultimate's freeze chance can also help crowd control enemies and prevent them from dealing damage in the first place. 
but the best option is Japard. He's an incredible pairing for Yanqing thanks to his really thick team-wide shield which is comfortable against either single target or AoE attacking enemies. He also has an innate ability that increases his taunt level along with light cones that can do so, so Japard can further keep the heat off Yanqing. Japard is also a great skill point generator which helps feed into Yanqing's skill-hungry playstyle and like March he can also freeze enemies for more crowd control. You may also want an abundance teammate for comfort. Bailu has incredible healing and support utilities with an emergency revive. Natasha also has very good healing with a debuff cleansing mechanic that can prove situationally useful. Of course, Yanxing can have a team with a preservation plus abundance support combo, which really helps battles feel comfortable. Harmony units are also Yanxing's best friends to help buff his damage and they all have their own situational benefits. Asta buffs the team's attack and speed and is amazing for breaking fire toughness. Tingyun gives amazing single target buffs, adds damage to the buffed unit, and also recharges energy which helps with Yanqing's ultimate cost. It's also nice that her added lightning damage instance can also proc with Yanqing's follow-up attacks. Branya bumps a unit into the queue, gives damage bonus, attack, and crit damage buffs which Yanqing can definitely appreciate, and her debuff cleansing mechanic can also help a lot. Pella and Welt are great Nihility teammates for Yanqing too. Pella shreds the enemy's defense and can also remove their buffs which has great situational uses. If you have her E4, she reduces ice resistance to help further boost Yanqing's damage. Welt can combine his slowing and imprisonment debuffs to keep delaying enemy turns. This gives them less opportunity to hit Yanqing, and Yanqing can clean them up more safely and quickly, especially with high speed stats. Your remaining flex slots will ultimately vary depending on the combat scenario and enemies. As stated before as well, skill point management is also quite important, as Yanqing tends to be skill point hungry. So utilize good point generators or units who aren't too skill dependent like healers, Japard, Tingyun, and so on to help feed Yanqing's point needs. And for team arrangement, make sure to keep Yanqing at the farthest opposite side from an ally that has the highest aggro, particularly preservation or taunt units. This is to prevent enemy splash attacks against such allies from also hitting Yanqing. And that's going to be all for this Yanqing guide. I'm definitely a fan of this Shenzhou swordsman with his playful animations and impressive numbers to boot. Let me know in the comments whether or not you have Yanqing and what you think of him. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care! There are no more fitting opponents for me on the Lafu, but out there among the stars, there may be someone yet.